Coming up next is the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time. We've got big news on some comings and goings from WWE and Impact Wrestling. Big news from Ring of Honor as well regarding Supercard of Honor coming to New Orleans as part of WrestleMania weekend. And also a flashback. We take a look back at 30 years ago today in the wrestling business and the very first ever main event on NBC, which had the largest American television wrestling audience in history. The Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time starts right now. Ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report, prime time for February 5th, 2018. It's the day after the Super Bowl, David Hero. I'm Damian Nelson sitting alongside David Octavius, the Tiberius the Alleged Backyard, one time knockout, straight edge, hardcore, Hall of Famer Hero, and happy February. How was Groundhog's Day for you? Repetitive. <laughs> See, apparently it was stressful for you because you still have this damn dog. Oh well, no, what's the name? What's that freaking groundhog gimmick name? Bill what's Murray? Funny Phil? Yeah. The Snoop did not like Phil at all. You didn't. What's a, well, she wanted to be a part of it, right? Well, I mean, you're he, supposed to buy it. She's a great that. back scratcher. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't complain either. This doesn't. Folks, thanks for joining us wherever you may be here from the Pro Wrestling Report. Uh, so much going on in the wrestling world that uh, without further ado, let's hop right into this hot news. There were some big returns this week in WWE and big debuts as well on several of the shows. Firstly, back to WWE Raw, where we saw the coach, Jonathan Coachman, return to commentary, replacing Booker T on Monday Night Raw, joining Michael Cole and Corey Graves. Interesting comments by Booker T on his recent podcast as well, where he said he and Corey Graves uh, have a little bit of heat and saying that Corey Graves is very close to be on, being on his bad side and that he, Corey Graves, was the reason that Booker T was taken off of raw commentary. I wonder if that is truly the case, because if you look back in the annals of time, you'd see that uh, Booker T actually replaced David Otunga, who had taken time off for a movie, and the coach re-signed with WWE after leaving ESPN, and it feels like that is probably a more natural fit. So it seems like all along the way, Booker T was a temporary fill-in for that position on commentary. Be that as it may, the coach is back, did a good job on this past Monday night. Good to see the coach back in WWE. The Elimination Chamber is upon us in a couple of weeks from Las Vegas, Nevada, and we found out this week that there will be two Elimination Chamber matchups. Firstly, the woman will have their first ever Elimination ch Chamber match. Alexa Bliss will be defending her championship against five other competitors. Her championship will be on the line. The odds definitely against Bliss in that matchup. We also found out there will be qualifying matches for the Elimination Chamber for the men's version in Las Vegas, and three men have qualified at this point. John Cena, Braun Strowman, and the man who we all walk with, Elias, who I'm becoming more and more of a huge fan of as each week passes. Yes, I do walk with Elias. Elimination Chamber again, February 25th from Las Vegas, Nevada. Two big matchups. A first ever women's Elimination Chamber match and the men's Elimination Chamber matchup. The winner of their men's match will be the uh, challenger for Brock Lesnar's Universal Championship at WrestleMania. Jeremy Borash is now in WWE, the former Impact Wrestling and WCW announcer who spent uh, the last 12 or 13 years with Impact Wrestling. He's coming over to World Wrestling Entertainment. Uh, he is going to be working, at least from what we can tell, with NXT. And Jeremy Borash, of course, has been a mainstay in Impact Wrestling for a number of years. Now coming over to WWE, joining the recent signings of EC3 and the man who debuted on 205 Live last week as its new commissioner, the endorsed rock star Spud, whose new name is Drake Maverick. And he still remains endorsed. The commissioner of 205 Live announcing a 16-man tournament for the championship, uh, which vacated when Enzo was fired by the company. That will be determined in a final match at WrestleMania in New Orleans. 
Speaking of New Orleans, uh, Ring of Honor Wrestling has made a big announcement about their Supercard of Honor 7 show. R Cody Rhodes will be taking on Kenny Omega in one of the big main events at that show on April 7th in New Orleans at the UNO, UNO Lakefront Arena. Our company hopes to set an another attendance record as they did last year in Orlando for the company. That match announced along with a brand new streaming service announced from Ring of Honor Wrestling called the Honor Club. That service will cost $9.99 a month which will get you 50% off the pay-per-view events and uh, you can also sign up for a, a more expensive membership that will include the pay-per-view events. Let's not forget Ring of Honor is available on Fight TV, that's F-I-T-E dot TV, Fight. You can download the Fight TV app and get a brand new episode of Ring of Honor Wrestling every single Monday night by going to fight.tv slash PWR. That's fight.tv slash PWR right now. Speaking of Ring of Honor's weekly television show this past Monday night from Ring of Honor, on their latest episode, we saw the retirement of Bubba Ray Bully Ray Dudley, retiring from in-ring action on Ring of Honor, and a well, well done segment on that show. Well, it would coincide with later that night, them being announced, he and his brother, Devon, of the Dudley Boys, announced as the next entrance into the WWE Hall of Fame. That, of course, will take place on Friday night, April 6th in New Orleans, just before the Shenanigans VIP Party, which is coming to Bourbon Street, starts right after the Hall of Fame. Tickets are available now for that big event at PWRshow.com. Uh, folks, we also saw on Impact Wrestling this week a the big championship change that we had talked about a couple of weeks ago on this program. Austin Aries returning to the show to defeat Eli Drake, and uh, that would garner about 319,000 viewers on Pop TV. Brand new look for Impact as well. This, of course, the first of the tapings under Scott Demore and Don Callis, who are now in charge of the creative for the company. And uh, that show, again, 319,000 viewers up 3% from the 310,000 viewers the prior week. And and uh, the highest rating that the show had gotten since last August. So hopefully things are looking up for Impact Wrestling uh, on that network pop TV. Folks, uh, that's this week's hot news. We are going to take a time out and a break. That's what that is. When we come back, we are going to have a flashback, a new feature here on the Pro Wrestling Report primetime, a flashback to a great event that happened on this day in wrestling history. We'll be back in just a moment. WrestleMania weekend's biggest party is coming to Bourbon Street. Don't miss an all-inclusive all-night party Friday, April 6th. Hosted by Kevin Nash and over 20 other wrestling stars. Enjoy unlimited drinks all night long at the Bourbon Cowboy on Bourbon Street. Throw beads from the balcony. Drink and party with your favorite wrestling stars. Hurry, limited quantities available. Purchase tickets now at PWRshow.com. That's PWRshow.com. Collar and elbow bouts usually began as a contest of balance. The opening position or stance featured the hand and arm positioning which gave the wrestling style its name. Contestants faced one another, each placing one hand on his adversary's shoulder and gripping his adversary's forearm with his other hand. This establishes the opening box, prevents bull-like rushes or throat grabs, minimizes disadvantages in height or arm's reach, and prevents deft footwork. Here, the champion squares off with the challenger. Each holds the stance until his opponent forces or permits him to break. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for Wrestling Report Prime Time. Damian Nelson, David Hero, David. So, collar and elbow. I suppose we just saw a nice little spot there. Collar and elbow. You've got the shirt on yeah. as well. It is. It is the brainchild of Al Snow. It is streetwear, fashion, mix a little bit of pro wrestling. Some of the most comfortable T-shirts ever. Yeah. Street fashion. So, like hood or urban? It's uh, a little bit of urban. A little bit of pro wrestling, a little bit of rock and roll. A little bit of rock and roll. Yeah, there's a little rock and roll in this. It's it's, it's like for it's, it's the cool. What's cool about it is it's wrestling gear you can wear anywhere. <laughs> you know, it's not a picture of some dude's face on your chest. You know, it's just and it's like cool. It is a nice uh, it's a nice design. Similar to the flag of the city of Chicago. 
Yes, it is. Which I don't understand why they would do that, but. Why Chicago would have no, a flat? Why we did this shirt? But it's, I thought it looks kind of cool. It's going to be good in the Chicago market. It would be, yes. Collar and elbow. It, it actually is. And they're comfortable shirts. Collar and elbow wear.com. Collar and brand.com. Uh, great stuff. We got hats. We got jackets. We got hoodies. We got t shirts. We got stuff for the ladies, stuff for the kids, uh, throwbacks. Some super cool stuff. So, you know, this is pretty interesting. It's February 5th, 2018. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is our fifth week back, being back in the studio, being back weekly with our tremendous audience out there. 30 years ago it happened. 30 years ago. Yeah. The show we're about to talk about. Yeah. About to talk about, to talk about. It was 30 ago. years ago. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but um, five weeks back, how, how's it feeling? I mean, you've screwed up Feedback Friday, and everyone, everyone hates oh. it now because... Who you brought back, so you know, that's all, a once monthly the show. Star it's back next week. The Star Maker is exactly that. He made you relevant again. No, bow ties made me relevant. Again. Your, your steering wheels are not that relevant. Bow ties are cool. Okay. But uh, you know, Kenny's Kenny. I mean, you know what you get for when you sign up with Kenny Bolin? You know, no, I didn't know because I didn't sign up. You know with what? Kenny He's charming. I signed up with Cornette. He's charming and abrasive. He does both. And he's just, he has a lot of wisdom, a lot of knowledge. Folks, it's a flashback edition now of Prime Time. Why are you throwing my pins around? What is this because anger, kind of this rage, words. and what is this, this, this beverage you have here? This keeps me straight, mellowed out. Kombucha. It's fermented tea. It's basically vinegar. It's gluten-free, non-dairy, and vegan. Yeah, it's... You, you, it's, you're, you're, you, you do those things? It's fermented cultures. It's bacteria. Right? <laughs> Snoop actually turned me on to it. <laughs> she cranked it. She like pointed it. We walked into the store and she walked right down the aisle, saw the kombucha bottles, and started barking at it. Well, it's flashback. We take a look back to this day in wrestling history. February 5th, 1988 this is where we are taking the time machine. We're, got, we're hopping to the TARDIS. And we're going back to February 5th, 1988. I always thought that was offensive. TARDIS? Just how it's pronounced. TARDIS. Yeah. Do you know what it stands for? No. Time and relative dimension in space. You know, it's bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. <laughs> the main event. It was the very first episode of the main event, broadcasting on NBC. Now, WWE had been producing Saturday night's main event for quite a while, yet this new concept, live on a Friday night, one hour, the main event was brought to the NBC network by WWE. Again, it was the Market Square Arena uh, in Indianapolis, Indiana, which is a bizarre arena to me. I don't, had you ever been there? Not no, the I new Conseco no, place, no, but no. the Market Square was like, it was like, it, a lot of it was underground. So you, when you walked in, you walked in on like the upper level and then you went down. And my brain, when I was younger, couldn't process that information. Hmm. Like also the Pyramid Arena in Memphis, like a pyramid goes like yeah, this, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The seats go like that. Blew my mind. 1988. We had come off the heels of the WrestleMania the prior year of David yes, Harrell. March 1987, yes. Pontiac Silverdome, Hogan versus Andre. The big matchup, the money match, 93-173, attendance record that had been held until Dallas's WrestleMania a couple of years ago. But this would be the main event, repeat, rematch rather, between those two, the first time they would touch again since that night at WrestleMania 3, Hogan versus Andre. David Hero, this night was historic, not because of what happened in that historic matchup, because it was memorable, but the fact that 33 million people in America tuned in to watch this special on Friday night on NBC. It got a 15.2 oh, yeah. rating. It was huge. It is still, to this day, the most watched wrestling event in American television history. It's the two biggest iconic stars of all time. Hogan versus Andre, most watched in TV history, but... A lot more happened on that match than just the two men colliding because it would be the match that would frame and set up the tournament at WrestleMania 4 for, for the WWE Championship at Trump Plaza. It was the first time we saw the WWE Hall of Famer Trump on the, uh, on the television there from WWE. And at, t at that point, things were good. Um, but it was Andre pinning Hulk Hogan in controversial fashion and then being revealed that there were two referees, identical twin referees. Who knew? Earl Hebner and Dave Hebner, who are... Twin brothers. In real life, and who both 
for referees. <laughs> Worked for WWE as well. Amazing. And Ted DiBiase had paid off this, this other referee, and Hogan got screwed. Hogan lost the championship, folks. Andre Hogan won the championship. Down. He got pinned. But he, the, 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 he lost. The he match did. was no, deemed no. a loss for Hogan. Agreed. Andre was presented with the championship, and he immediately did what? Turned it over to Ted DiBiase. He gave it to the million dollar man who had ultimately bought the championship. That all would be deemed un invalid and it would take us to that tournament at WrestleMania 4 to find out who would be the next champion. And that is neither here nor there for there. But what a matchup. What a matchup those two had and what shenanigans after the fact. And it, never it before felt real. and not since it felt have real. we seen anything like it. It felt real because. Oh my God! You have two identical referees. Yeah, and Hogan picked up. I think it was Earl and launched him. Launched, launched. Yes, halfway down the aisle, pretty much. Yes. He overshot. Yeah. All the people waiting to catch him. <laughs> and just like you're like, oh my God! We just saw something insane. Because if you're Joe Walmart watching that for the first time, and yeah, it's Hulk Hogan versus Andre the Giant, two megastars, top billing. If you could ever have a top billing on free television. And then all of a sudden, you see two identical referees. Mm -hmm. You uh -huh. can't. You can't, It was so perfect because who else but Ted DiBiase could have made uh, that happen? Uh, but it just, because it just of the shows, money, the, the plastic surgery that they had implied. But here's had what's happened. cool about it: back then, everything was so close to the best. Things never leaked out. You never knew that there were two twins, right? Yes. working for WWE. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, brilliance for sure. Well delivered, well executed. 33 million people, a 15.2 rating. Never before has more have more people, and never since have more people watched professional wrestling on television in America than that night, March, February 5th, 1988, 30 years ago, Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, uh, more matches, though, occurred on that card, David Hero, and I think it's interesting. But it was only a one hour show. It was a one hour show, which is why one match got cut short on the broadcast, actually. But we would see in their entirety. Uh, actually, no, we wouldn't. It would be the match that was cut short was Strike Force. Uh, versus the Hart Foundation for the Tag Team Championship. That match, they would go off the air with that match still in progress because they had run out of time. Uh, it was actually about 49 minutes of, of wrestling time, minus 10 minutes of commercials, one hour show. And uh, in subsequent uh, times, especially if you watch now on the WWE Network, you can get the match in its entirety. But, I mean, even that was, a, at the time, a main event matchup. Strike right. Force was over. Oh, they were. Tito Santana and Rick Martel. Rick Martel. Before he was the model or after he was the model? Before the model. Before the model. Uh, other matches that the crowd saw that night. Demolition versus the team of Billy Jack Haynes and Ken Patera. Hacksaw Jim Duggan versus the One Man Gang. Andre, I'm sorry, uh, Randy Macho Man Savage against the Honky Tonk Man. And uh, Savage would actually win that matchup by, uh, by countout, thus not winning the Intercontinental Championship. There would be five main events, David Hero. The second one would come to us in 1989 from Milwaukee's Bradley Yes. Center. And uh, that's the Twin Towers versus the Mega Powers. Indeed. And that is also the night that the Mega Powers exploded, David Hero. Yes. They went uh, in Milwaukee at the Bradley Center. That's when Savage attacked Hogan in a jealous rage over Elizabeth after Elizabeth had been knocked down at ringside and Hogan took her back to the back to get medical attention. That happened on our watch in our town in Milwaukee right here at the Bradley Center, which that's probably, no, actually, it's seeing a WWE event in one month from today, yeah. March 5th. March 5th. And that may be its yeah. last it, it until will. the new arena opens yes. later this year. What's the new arena called? Um, I don't know. I have no clue. <laughs> Overpriced? <laughs> <laughs> right now, Milwaukee has three arenas, ladies and gentlemen, all in a row. The one from the 50s, the one from the 80s, and the one from the 2010s. Uh, and I'm surprised they're not keeping all three open, by the way. Uh, you would think they'd turn down the Mecca, which I understand why they can't do they can't. and then leave the Bradley Center and then have the new gimmick there next to it. But uh, main events, five of them, they were more special than Saturday night's main events. Of course, they were live. They were live, and they were... I mean, if you watch this, go back. We talked about last week watching uh, the 92 Rumble on the network. Go back and watch this uh, this one hour of television from uh, WWE on NBC in 1998, 88. And uh, you will see what wrestling was. And, and, and even as a fan today. And they weren't doing flips. Nope. Everything. Even as something. a fan today, the finish, the ending, the whole story told after the Hogan-Andre match. If you don't know, you would believe it. Agreed. So that is uh, the flashback, ladies and gentlemen, looking back at uh, this day in wrestling history. Uh, we want to appreciate and thank you for your patience last week as we were not able to bring you episodes of PWR tonight. But I am pleased to say that starting tomorrow night, I am back again each and every night 
on our YouTube channel and Fight TV. That's F-I-T-E, Fight. Remember, you get the Fight TV app for free right now, uh, Fight TV dot tv slash pwr that's fight dot tv slash pwr download it to your mobile device if you go to that site on your mobile device download the app right from there david hero wrestlemania the, yes. the, the, let me tell you this aside from the wwe network fight tv has everything else oh my god literally it's everything else that's happening that weekend from a wrestling show standpoint and it's with the exception of shenanigans by the way but they have everything from a well, wrestling event standpoint right that's part of the appeal um Everything will be available on Fight TV. Impact at WrestleCon, um, the the Ring of Honor show in 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 town as well on on, on Saturday night. All of that will be available. For Impact. All of that will be available on Fight TV, wow, yeah. and uh, it is a great opportunity. I'm pleased to be joining the co-hostess with the mostess again, SoCal Val, and hosting that weekend's presentation on Fight TV from WrestleMania weekend from New Orleans. New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans, Louisiana, for WrestleMania. So uh, we're back with PWR tonight this week. Check us out on podcast form as well. That's blogtalkradio.com slash PWR tonight. You'll get a brand new episode of the WCW Nitro or WCW Reaction, where Meathead and Matthew Thomas will take you back to this day in uh, 1997, I think they're in now, and look back at some of the goings-on in WCW at that time. You I actually listened to that one. I didn't think I liked it because I hated WCW, but I find it to be very, very interesting each and every week. That available blogtalkradio.com slash PWR. So, any words of wisdom, David Hero, for the rest of the world out there as we depart you here? I Did you win yesterday at the Super Bowl? I charged with your team, the Eagles or the uh, Patriots? Is that I didn't like either team. My team was the Saints, and they 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 they, they, they weren't in it. No, they were no. So, did you watch? I didn't watch. Did you have a favorite commercial? No, no, no. Did you watch the halftime didn't show? Didn't care. Wow, what is that? Maybe you do need that dog. Where is it? Marmaduke! No, it's Snoop. What was Marmaduke? Snoop is busy. <laughs> <laughs> for that one, ladies and gentlemen, this is David Nelson saying we'll see you again next Monday night for a brand new edition of Primetime and tomorrow night for PWR Tonight. WrestleMania weekend's biggest party is coming to Bourbon Street. Don't miss an all-inclusive all-night party Friday, April 6th. Hosted by Kevin Nash and over 20 other wrestling stars. Enjoy unlimited drinks all night long at the Bourbon Cowboy on Bourbon Street. Throw beads from the balcony. Drink and party with your favorite wrestling stars. Hurry, limited quantities available. Purchase tickets now at pwrshow.com. That's pwrshow.com.